Hello there, sixth grade, and uh, welcome to the month of December. It's hard to believe we're already here. I'm uh, here to talk today about some great books to consider for this month and moving forward. And today, I don't know about you, but I am struggling to find time to read these days. Uh, things are getting busier, and um, yeah, maybe it's just a little bit tougher to find time especially to read for fun right now. So I thought I'd take a minute to talk a little bit about how to reestablish that habit of reading just for pleasure. And um, maybe it's just, uh, you know, getting yourself back in the habit. Maybe it's, um, especially with trimester two getting going, we can kind of re refocus and recalibrate a little bit. A couple of tips uh, coming to you about those habits. One thing is uh, just having reading materials ready to read when you are um, either given that time to do so or when you're looking for something to do. Um, it's always a bummer if you are in the mood to read something and then realize that you've already finished a book or you don't have something new to read, you don't have something you're looking forward to. So just reminders about some of these things, whether it is making use of picking up books at our library at Valley or at your local public library. Maybe you've got a, a stack of books at home that you've already read and reread and reread, and you're you know needing to have some different things in mind. Um, remember that you've got that Mac and Via app that's on your iPad, and that has a great collection of eBooks and audiobooks that you can uh, check out and get a chance to read as well. Um, but just keeping those materials handy and having a, a running list going so that once you have um, finished reading something, you have in mind something new to read. Finding some ways to connect reading to your everyday life. I think it's an important thing to keep in mind that reading is part of your daily schedule. Whether your teacher is asking you to read for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes a day, um, or whether they're asking you to do maybe an hour's worth of reading in a week, um, it's just a, a really nice thing to do to, to keep in mind that having reading as a regular part of your habit on a daily basis, um, that's a way that you become um, a stronger reader too. Finding the, the thing that works for you. Some people are bedtime readers. Um, that's their time of day to read. Others tend to read in the morning. Um, some people like to read when they uh, sit down for a snack or to eat something. Other people like to read when they go outside, and I know that's going to get more difficult as the weather gets colder, but um, find the times that work best for you. Consider your hobbies and personal interests. As I'm sharing books today, some of these books are going to sound good, um, I hope, but others may not because they might not connect to anything that you're personally interested in. So keeping, again, that list of books that sound like good ones because uh based on your hobbies and your interests, there are going to be things that are going to be more interesting to you and, and things that are not. If you have topics you care about, that reading becomes more interesting. I know that seems like kind of a face palm, duh, Mrs. Martin, we know. But um, going back to that idea, if it's a hobby or an interest that you have, whether it's animals or sports or music or art, um, reading about that, even if it's a, an article you know, if it's a magazine, if it's online, um, you know, a graphic novel, a comic, it does not have to be a chapter book uh, to be something of interest. Uh, but reading more about something that you care about is going to pursue that love of reading for you. And then also uh, keep in mind that uh, I'm one person to give you a recommendation for a book. Your teacher might be another. Um, family members are great to give recommendations and so are friends and classmates. So ask other people uh, your age. What are you reading? What are you loving to read? Um, connect with students that way. Um, you know, if you're not already a part of our Read Club, please join. We'd love to have you do that um, via Zoom because it's a way for you to find out what are other people your age reading and enjoying. It's a great way to help direct your reading choices. So just a couple of things to keep in mind um, that I hope get you thinking about establishing or maybe reestablishing those reading habits. I think sometimes when we have to get our, our habits or our routines um, changed over, and certainly learning from home is challenging us to do that, uh, this is a good time to refocus that 
uh, as we start this new trimester um, at a distance. Really appreciate all of the uh, shopping that was done um, from home for our Scholastic Book Fair that was offered online a few weeks ago. We did purchase a bunch of books for our library and those will be available very soon. I'll be letting you know uh, when you can actually uh, check those out and put those books on hold. I wanted to just share a couple of the titles that will be there. There are many, many more than this, but here are a few of them that you may wish to just jot down as uh, books that are continuing a series, uh, new graphic novels, um, some that were shared in the book fair video. Um, anyway, popular authors, etc. And some of the books that I think some of our students are going to be most excited about are on this slide. But again, we have probably another 30 or 40 books that we ordered on top of the ones that you see here. And I'll be letting you know more about that as soon as the books are processed and ready for you to check out. The first book I'm sharing with you today is the first in a series. Some of you may have read this or been introduced to it in elementary school, but if you were not, this is always a favorite uh, for sixth graders and sometimes seventh graders too in um, uh, the Valley Library. And I loved uh, the first book in this series in particular. This is the Shadow Children series by Margaret Peterson Haddix, and the first book is called Among the Hidden. Our main character's name is Luke, and Luke has never been to a birthday party. He's never gone to a friend's house to stay overnight. Uh, he's never been to school. And at least for right now, some of us can relate to <laughs> learning from home. But Luke has never even had a friend outside of his house because he's never left his house. In Luke's world, the population police run everything, and they have decided, uh, due to things that you learn about in the story, that every household may only have two children. That's the limit. And Luke is the third child in his family. His parents broke the rules. They had a third child. And as a result, they have to keep him hidden in their house. So Luke's two older siblings and his parents are able to leave the house. They can go to school. They can go to their jobs. Um, they can live a fairly normal life. Luke cannot. He has to stay hidden away at all times uh, or it could cost his life. It could cost the lives of his family members as well. But one day, Luke, who I think is maybe 11 or 12 at the beginning of the story, he sees a girl's face in the window of a house nearby. There's kind of some new construction near his house. And he knows from watching out the window uh, that this family already has two children that go to school and all of that. And he sees this family leave for the day. And he sees a girl's face in the window um, at a time when everybody is gone. And he realizes he's not the only third child, the only hidden child in this neighborhood. He's uh, got another <laughs> kind of partner in crime. And he has to decide what he's going to do about that. Those are just the first few opening chapters of this exciting first book in the series. Uh, it's about government. It's about uh, what would it be like to have to live in hiding? And then what choices do you have if you decide you're going to put yourself out there uh, in the open? Margaret Peterson Haddix, Try Among the Hidden. Slacker by Gordon Corman is such a fun read about a kid, uh, not, a, uh, not a beaver on the front cover. The beaver plays a different part in the story, but uh, a kid who looks a lot like this uh, animal sits around most days, doesn't do much of anything productive other than, um, you know, snacks, avoids homework, games for hours, hangs out with his friends in the basement, and in fact, does so for so long one day that when his parents tell him to take, you know, a lasagna or a casserole or something out of the oven, because uh, they're leaving for the afternoon, you know, they say, go ahead and listen for the timer on the oven. We're going to, we're, we're going to leave. He doesn't even take his headphones off of his ears. Um, you know, he just kind of yells up to them. Yeah, 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 whatever you said. Doesn't hear the oven timer and it almost burns down the house, right? Uh, the oven, um, you know, is practically the casserole is burned to a crisp. 
um, his parents are absolutely beside themselves. Um, they've decided, okay, that's it. <laughs> you know, this gaming has gone far enough. You have slacked off. You uh, have, you've reached a, a new low. We're done with all this. So it's time for uh, Cameron to do something with his life. It's time for him to step up and do something productive. His parents decide that he needs to get involved in some way, right? With some kind of club or volunteer organization or something. And Cameron is a, a bright kid. He decides he's going to invent his own club at school and it's going to actually be a fake club. It's going to make it seem like they're doing really good deeds for people instead of slacking off. And then in the meantime, they can just slack off and pretend like they're doing stuff. But the problem is Cameron makes it so convincing. Some kids think the club is real and Cameron ends up being stuck as president. And that's the premise of the story. Uh, you got to read it to find out. It is absolutely hilarious, as are all of Gordon Corman's books. Uh, this is in the humor section. Money Hungry by Sharon Flake in Realistic Fiction. Uh, this imagines the story of a girl named Raspberry who has lived a life without money before. In fact, she's lived this way a few different times. Um, her dad has been in and out of their life a number of uh, different occasions, and she knows that things get bad when her dad comes into her life. Uh, her mom works multiple jobs to make ends meet, and she and her mom have been without a place to live on more than one occasion. Raspberry does not want that to happen again. She and her mom have a place to live now, but she knows the signs and she knows that if she doesn't hang on to some money, it's possible that she and her mom could end up on the streets. And so Raspberry begins to sell things at school, anything she can get her hands on. Um, you know, old chocolates that she had from, uh, you know, Christmas time. Pencils, you know, she'd buy them for 10 cents at the dollar store and sell them for a quarter to her classmates. And then she's squirreling this money away in different places, in her, re in her room, in her locker, in, you know, pockets of her sweatshirts. But it becomes almost an obsession um, for Raspberry. She's lying awake at night trying to think of new ways to make money. And her friends are starting to feel like it has become, it's like overtaking her life. And they can't quite understand why she's so addicted to making money because Raspberry isn't always telling them um, everything that's going on and, and why she, you know, really wants to make all this money. She doesn't want to tell them the truth about uh, everything going on with her parents. This is the story of a girl who feels desperate and is trying to maintain some control. And um, it's the realistic kinds of back and forth uh, between, um, you know, can, can we make it to the next month? Will we have enough money for food and for rent and all of that? Um, and this is the first story. There is also a second book called Begging for Change, which is a follow-up story to Raspberry and her mom. Um, just a beautifully written book, and so is the second one. You'll absolutely love this story, and you'll want to find out what's going to happen with uh, these characters. Close to a Killer by Marcia Qualey is such an interesting mystery story. Um, our main character, Barry, is uh, getting to know her mom again because her mom has just been released from prison. Her mom has opened up a hair salon and has opened it up with a bunch of other women who are also ex-convicts. So they also were in jail and now all of them together have opened this salon and they have named the salon Killer Looks, which is a pretty darn good name for a salon uh, for, for ex-criminals. Um, all of these women are doing hair and nails and you know everything a salon would do and it's the hottest place to go in town because everyone wants to be a customer at this you know, salon where, where these uh, ex-prisoners are working. So their business is booming until two very well-known townspeople are brutally murdered. And suddenly, all eyes, including the news, are turned to this salon. People are wondering and questioning and suspicious of Barry's mother 
and the women who work there. Is it possible that some of these women are responsible for the murders? Or is it the case that someone is trying to make it look that way? It's a wonderfully written mystery story, and if you like a good whodunit, uh, Close to a Killer should be your next book. My last story is set in Minnesota, and it's historical fiction uh, right at the turn of uh, the century. It's in 1898, about a kid who is pretty sick of school, decides he does not wish to go back um, over his winter holiday, I believe, and uh, instead decides to join his dad in the logging industry. And so uh, if you have any interest in what it would have been like to be part of, um, you know, being a, a logger during that time frame, um, you know, in the 1890s, uh, Ben joins his dad at this northern Minnesota logging camp. He wants to know more about his mom because his dad doesn't talk about his mom who passed away. And he believes that in working closely with his dad, he, he might actually get to find out. Um, Ben, though, thought he'd get to work more with the loggers at first. He's picturing chainsaws and axes and, you know, that kind of thing and getting a chance to actually cut down trees and, you know, lift heavy stuff and be all big and tough. And uh, unfortunately, at least at the beginning, he's finding his long days are filled with a lot of kitchen tasks. And so he really has to build up to um, some of the other more grueling work that he thinks he'd get to do. Uh, Blackwater Bend by William Durbin is a great book for those who have that Minnesota northern woods history, uh, or if you spend time in the northern woods, uh, if you do any camping or hiking or fishing, this would be a great fit for you. I hope that something I shared today maybe sparked an interest for you. If you think back to the beginning of my talk about connecting to a hobby or an interest for you, um, if you think about just having a list of books in mind for when you're done reading something, um, maybe even thinking back to some of the earlier book talks I've given this year, hopefully one or two of those titles are something um, that you might be able to go back to. Think about connecting with friends or family members and other classmates, uh, get some recommendations for something to read, and as always you can message me on Schoology and say, hey, I really loved this book or this author. Um, I'm interested in this topic. What can you recommend to me? Uh, let me know. Let Mrs. Kump know. We are here for you. Thanks so much for listening. Happy reading.